Today, we're looking at Noodler's Dragon's Napalm. Hi, I'm Adam, and I'm an ink guy. I get inks, test them, and share the results with you. Now, Noodler's Dragon's Napalm is kind of an orangey red ink. To make sure I have a range of experience with this ink, I do the writing samples. I then put the ink into a different pen for a day. I then put it into a Pierre Cardin President with a medium nib to take my notes for this video. Before we get to the writing samples, let's look at the sciencey bits. And up first is the chromatography. And I agree with Vita that I've learned a lot by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. I put a line of ink down, immediately put it in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. Interestingly, this particular ink didn't just push up, but pushed down that page. I don't know what happened. It fought against the water moving down on that chromatography. There is a darker line where it was put down. The pink pushes up. It becomes kind of a red with this highlighter yellow across the top. The one on the right I let dry for 10 minutes before I dunk it into water. And the pink line across the bottom is got a little bit of hold on to it, sort of. The pink pushes up, we get the red, we get the yellow. The biggest thing I notice on when I let it dry is it didn't push as far, but a lot more of the darker colors pushed farther. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard this ink might be to clean from your pens. I let the smear dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, I wouldn't use this as a note taker because too much of it blurs out and might become difficult to read. Here's one word that I write over and over and over again. I'm not gonna misread that word, but if I'm doing some research and I have to then go highlight after, that might be a problem if I'm re-familiarizing myself with older research I've done. Looking at the water, we see that when I put a drop of water down in just 30 seconds, most of that ink comes up off the page leaves only a little bit of a pink behind. Pen flush does very much the same thing that water did. It removes most all of it off the page. Some area gets a little bit lighter, which is strange when we look at what happens next. But pen flush does get a little bit more of this off the page. I'm hoping only water's needed to remove this from your pen. The strange thing that happens is on bleach. Bleach didn't completely remove it from the page. In fact, Bleach looks like it has more ink on the page than the flush or the water. More of that pink looks like it's there. That pink does make me wonder how strong it might be. For the inks I've tested, I found an average viscosity of 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Noodler's Dragon's Napalm has a viscosity of 3.87. Wow, that's far right on my viscosity bell curve. That means that this is not putting a ton of ink onto the page. It is a drier ink, but that the fact that this ink is so saturated is the reason that you get as much as you do, which is what makes me think for why there's so much that stays around. It's so saturated that it gets in and that it's high viscosity doesn't hamper its ability to put a ton of stuff down. Just not a ton of the ink, but the ink has so much stuff in it. To find my average dry times, I use my writing samples done on Clairefontaine, Tomoe River, and Rhodia paper with the extra fine and medium nib. For the inks I've tested, I've found an average dry time of 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Now, Noodler's Dragon's Napalm has an average dry time of 15 seconds, and considering how incredibly high the viscosity was, that's pretty cool that it comes right back into normal. You can sort of expect it, because when it's got such a high viscosity like that, so far away from water, it's not putting as much ink down on the page, so, you can see how it can get a normal dry time. Now, let's look at the writing samples. So I picked this ink up in bottle form after I had it in a sample. And, you know, at this point, this bottle's about halfway. So this is after a sample when I wound up deciding, yes, I want this. Uh, to keep my writing samples consistent, oh, good Lord, it's like I'm falling off over here. To keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao... Ah, give me my hand back. 
<laughs> to keep my writing samples consistent, I use a Jinhao 159 with a Goulet 1.1 stub. Still have my hand. I use a Jinhao X450 with a Goulet medium and a Jinhao X750 with a Goulet extra fine. Let's look at Clairefontaine. We get no bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 gives no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. Eh. As a color, it's eh. The extra fine has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. Yes, it shows some shading throughout. It's hard to spot, but it's there. 11 seconds to dry. The medium gives no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. Yes, it shows color variation. We get plenty of darker and lighter spots, 13 seconds to dry. The scrubby shows us we should get some color variation in the medium. We do. It doesn't show as much color variation in the extra fine. It's much harder to spot in the extra fine. The smear test says we might be able to recover this. It's funny because the, the color looks like it should be a red. And it's definitely kind of a orangey red. You know, I, I put in there that something about this I don't, it's funny because it's not a color I normally go after, but something about this particular color just makes me a little happy. Yeah, makes me happy. So the Tomoe River has no bleeding. Yes, it has ghosting. I think it would ghost invisible ink. The 1.1 has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. It's a boring ink in so many ways, and it's not the best color. In so many ways, it just makes me happy as a color. The extra fine, a lighter tone than we got in the 1.1. No feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade, 13 seconds to dry. The medium becomes a darker tone than what we see in the extra fine with no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade, 19 seconds to dry. The scrubby told us we're not getting any color variation and we didn't. The smear test says you don't get to recover it. So I go to Rhodia paper, Rhodia. No bleeding, no ghosting. No peeking on the next papers. I'm gonna go ahead and do the review like this so you can't see them. The 1.1 has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. It does show some shading, not tons of it. Like I said, there's so much about this ink that I shouldn't like. I just, the color, I this particular one, I really, really like. The extra fine, no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade, 11 seconds to dry. The medium has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, and no shade, and took 20 seconds to dry. The scrubby showed us we're not going to get any color variation, and we didn't, and the smear test says I likely can't recover it. But this, right here, is what I actually like about it. When I put it in a very wet pen, the Pierre Cardin President, and this is a medium nib. That's medium. It's a very inexpensive pen. That's a medium. That's a medium. So it says medium. I believe it says medium. Let's see if the camera picks up. I'm not seeing it show up on camera. This is a medium nib. It's not like it's anything special. It's an Indian pen. It was very inexpensive to get. I actually ordered it when I ordered all those Krishna inks and those, what, those hazel notebooks, these notebooks. It was there on the page. It, it was, you know, a couple of dollars. But look at this color. That's what I really like about this. So, you know, I put not the best color. Often lacks shade, especially in wet pens. But look at the color in a wet pen. Fantastic. For me. Maybe not for you. For me, absolutely. So I tested it on some cheap paper like composition notebooks. The composition notebook gave us the beginnings of some bleed spots. It looks like it's really sinking in there, but it's not coming all the way through. Nowhere near all the way through, but it is definitely getting deep into the paper. It started to come through on the scrubby. It didn't touch the page underneath. We didn't really have, you know, and of course it being a, a thin paper, we have ghosting. The top is written with a medium. It has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. It's boring up there. 
I, you know, it, I like this. It's generally a boring ink. If I had my black light ready to go, I'd switch it on and you can see it glows under black light. That's the only special feature that it really has, which isn't even what I enjoy about this. The extra fine. No feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade, two seconds to dry. The scrubby shows us we're not going to get any color variation. We didn't get any color variation. The smear test says you likely can't recover it. <coughs> Excuse me. So I tested Traveler's Notebook Paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. Wasn't really expecting any problem with the Traveler's Paper. It's very nice paper. I find, you know, a lot of Japanese papers do very well. I like Japanese papers. I like Japanese pens. So if you have a sailor you don't like, you know, just throw it in a box. Throw it at me. I've never tried one, so hey, it would be great. Hoping to get one next month, though. So that'll be interesting. So the 1.1, no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. No shading on this one. The extra fine has no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen. Do I keep rubbing that mic? No sheen, no shading, seven seconds to dry. The medium, no feather, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade, 16 seconds to dry. Again, there's so much about this ink that I should not like. It lacks so much that I like in an ink, but the color is just there. You should sample ink, people, because when you buy samples, and that's how I buy almost all my ink, unless I really fall in love with a sample, it's not enough to go, this is nice. This is a very nice ink. When I really fall in love with a color, I just go buy a bottle, and then I wind up on a second and third bottle on these things, you know, rather quickly. I use them a lot. And I go through a different ink every single day. So that says a lot for how much I like this color. Scrubby shows us we're not going to get any color variation. We didn't. Smear test says you don't get to recover it. I'm sorry about my babbling. That's all I have for the writing sample. Finding inks that look like Noodler's Dragon's Napalm, I would prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I've chosen Birmingham Pen Company's Frank Gorshin Riddler Green because red and green look great together. Before I give my opinion on this ink, I would ask, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if it's your first time here, I would invite you to subscribe. So what do I think of Noodler's Dragon's Napalm? I don't think it's the best color. I think when you have wetter pens, it lacks shading. I think there's so much of this ink that I should not like, but there is something about using this ink that makes me happy. And it might be just even a connection of, I like movies with dragons in them, that breathing fire and all that, and that might make me happy while I'm using it, because something, every time I'm using it, makes me smile when I use this ink. So for everything that, in any ink you can use that can seem wrong, when it makes you happy, it's a great ink. And that's what this is for me. This is an ink that makes me happy despite everything else. Thanks for watching.